Cause I've been everywhere, man I've been everywhere, man Across the deserts, bear man I've breathed the mountain air, man I've traveled, I've had my chair, man I've been everywhere Been to Talamore, Seymour Wodonga Lulaban, Nambon, Ruchito, Kilmore, Murlaba Wodonga Emmerville, Wallaville, Connavano, Connavano, Strathbride, Prospine, Nala, Dow, Darwin, Ginger, Nala, Quinn, Mackilla, Walla, Miller, Burger, Villa, Cumberland Wodonga I've been everywhere, man I've been everywhere, man uh, yeah, we've been everywhere, man, and we're off today to a town that uh, is often the second half of a sentence. Uh, that is Wodonga, often f- preceded by the word Aubrey. Uh, we are staying on this side of the border, though. Andrew Pawsey, welcome to the Two Blokes Chatting Radio Show. Good morning to you, Neil. How are you? Good, thanks, mate. Rob has just run out of the studio coughing. We've all got this dreaded lurgy down here at the moment, so um, he's just disappeared momentarily. But he'll no doubt come back. You'll hear his voice shortly. Um, thanks for joining us this morning. Now, uh, I, I say with some trepidation that our friend Shane, who's been on this before, has asked us why we, sh- we should call you Frank. Uh, yes, he generally does that sort of thing. It's <laughs> short and sweet. He used Nicknamed after a ex Melbourne player called Frank Gian Polo, uh, and somehow my stupid mates shortened that to Pawsey and then Frank. So that's by, been my nickname for years and years ever since high school. Because uh, uh, Shane will be listening, he'll be disappointed if we don't say hello and uh, find that out. So, phew, we got through that okay. I was a bit concerned we might lose the license, so we just better need to make sure first. Um, now, uh, tell us about Wodonga. A lot of people hear of it in the context of Albury Wodonga, but there's more to Wodonga than Albury, I would have thought. Tell us a bit about Wodonga, where we'll find all that kind of stuff. Yeah, Wodonga's always the junior of the two, but um, obviously on the border of the Murray River between uh, New South Wales and Victoria, um, slightly closer to Melbourne than it is Sydney, um, but population of uh, roughly 45,000, so a reasonable size on its own. Okay, and um, I mean, is there stuff that happens in Wodonga that doesn't involve the other side of the river? Oh, now and again, but um, most things are, you know, as an example, it's Aubrey Wodonga Health. Uh, yep. So most things are interlinked and really they're, you know, one town really. Hey, we were talking earlier about the... Uh, Rob's back, by the way. New, New South Wales, Victoria, thing about playing cricket for Australia. You've got to be on the other side of the river. Does that sort of parochialism happen in, in sport and, and other things up there? Uh, it is between, if you call the locals. I've been there 26 years now and I'm probably still not a local. You know, another 15 years you'll get there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so there is between the locals, but generally there's a whole, there's a large population that's moved in Rizmi lately, um, so not overly, no, I would say so, no. And it's a pretty good place to live, sort of halfway between uh, Melbourne and Sydney, and it's, Aubrey Wodonga is a pretty sexy sort of address for a, a, a country centre, so there, there's probably people that would be attracted to live there because there's so much going on, you drive through the place and there's a lot of... Industry, business, obviously, agri- agriculture, any um, um, country town is going to draw an agricultural element, but there's a lot more to it, the dual town, than just that. Look, there is. It's a town that can self-support itself now, so like I said, a lot of industry, um, everything else, but we've obviously got the Murray River. Um, we've got Lake Hume, which, if anyone doesn't know, it's roughly six times the size of Sydney Harbour, so a large fishing, boating population. Um, we're not that far from the snowfields, both Mount Hotham and Falls Creek. So again, that's relatively close, about an hour's drive away. Yep. Um, and if you like a bit of sample of a bit of wine, like some people we know, <laughs> we've got Rother Glen Wineries and King Valley Wineries, all relatively close as well. Is the Rother Glen Wine Festival still the place to be? Because uh, my brother and his best mate, both now in their mid-70s, met their wives at the Rother Glen uh, Wine Festival. They girls come down from Sydney, the boys up from Geelong. So it was a it was a place to be back in those days. Is it still like that? No, nah, it's still kicking. It's um, getting bigger and bigger. It's all full of now of um, costumes and bus tours and all sorts of things. So yeah, no, it's as big as ever that one. So the folk who uh, live in Wodonga, what what sort of work do they do? Are they is it effectively a mini a mini Melbourne, mini Sydney, or is there a particular industry you lean towards? Uh, look, we've got we've got Vizzy Factory. We've got Uncle Ben's, so you know, and, and uh, Uncle Toby's just down the road at Corowa. In fact, if you're Uncle anybody, you're there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we've uh, also got a large or very large defence population. So the Australian Army mm-hmm. has three bases in the area, mainly for 
teaching, so training of um, all their apprentices and things like that. So it's a very large base. So uh, a lot of people are involved either with Defence themselves or, like myself, I'm a contractor for Defence. Uh, speaking of government stuff, we try and avoid it here, but politicians are notorious for telling untruths. What the hell is Allegedly. actually going on at Hydro 2.0? Or they'd be too big a gamble. I wouldn't know. <laughs> really? Yeah, uh, they obviously can't get their act together. Because uh, it's, it's uh, like most things, it's uh, tripled in original budget estimations. Allegedly. And I don't even know if they've started to build it. No, I think they've started and they've hit huge problems um, machinery-wise, I think. There might be a, a slightly large or very large machine stuck in the ground somewhere. You heard a rumour about that. The ground was a bit soft and it disappeared. No one's seen it since. Yeah, yeah. So I think they're trying to work out how to get that one back. <laughs> we're going to send Rob into the next studio so the hard questions stop because he's, yeah. he's hosting a new show after uh, another show after 11. So I'll he's leave you with it. Nice yeah. to meet you, Frank, and best wishes. You too. Thank you very much. No, I'm back. No, don't go away. No, don't, because then I've got to fill in for the rest of the, 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 the program. Um, so I had to stop in uh, Wodonga uh, in 2021 because I was coming back from Sydney. My mother had passed away and I'd been given uh, a permission to come back from living in Sydney and was stopped at Wodonga. During that whole COVID thing, how hard was it to manage your lives given that you couldn't cross the border? Uh, yeah, look, for some people, extremely. Mm -hmm. I'm lucky I live and work in Wodonga, so yep. I really have to cross the border. But half the people I work with had to cross every day, and, you know, there was a checkpoint, there was police, there was, um, had to present your ID and your permission to travel. Um, some people were stuck in that for an hour a day, or hour each time, yeah. back and forward. So um, a lot of people couldn't come, they couldn't open their shops because they weren't allowed in, back into the area if they lived sort of out of it. Uh, so I know while Melbourne had its issues, um, yeah, it wasn't easy when you're trying to cross the border every day. And, and the other thing that I'd be fascinated by, you said you've been up there 20 years or more, uh, in, yeah, go back 25 years, I suspect Wodonga was being bypassed by the freeway, but these days uh, Albury as well. Um, how much of a difference has that made to Albury-Wodonga that the freeway basically goes around the city? Look, initially it had a big for hospitality and the motels and things, but nowadays really um, it's such a big centre that for sporting events and things like that, the, the hotel motels are always full. Mm -hmm. um, and it's given us a second way to get around. Uh, the old causeway between Albury and Wodonga used to get um, very busy. Yep. So now you can take that or you can take the freeway to get to um, Albury. So it's actually made it a lot better and taken a lot of the trucks out of the main main drag. Because I guess that's the thing, isn't it, that back in, in, you know, let's go back 25 years, that in those days people would have been stopping there for lunch when they were leaving Melbourne. You know, they leave Melbourne, they have breakfast, leave Melbourne, get to Albury Wodong, stop for lunch. Uh, I guess you're not as reliant on that traffic now, as you say, because the place has gone bananas in size. Yeah, correct. It's self-feeding self now. Um, Go on the days where I used to uh, have to stop there and fill up my old V8 <laughs> Sydney. I could only get as far as uh, Wodonga from Melbourne. Um, so people don't have to stop anymore, but yeah, it's got enough people to feed itself, so yeah, it doesn't really need reliant on that traffic that much. So if people are coming up to Wodonga for a, a couple of days uh, over a long weekend or something, what's the one thing they've got to see while they're up there? Oh, well, obviously, I'd suggest the wineries. You probably know why for that. Yep. Um, Lake Hume this time of the year it's full it's magnificent uh, beautiful to see there's some really nice drives or some nice drives up to places like Jinjalik or Walla which follow the lake and then the Murray River and following in the tradition of good Donvale High School students like you and I, we can't count to one. Well done, Frank. Thanks for joining us on uh, Two Blokes Chatting and giving us some insight to Wodonga. See you next time I'm up there. Alright, thanks Neil. Thanks very much. All the best. Andrew Pawsey there in Wodonga.